stuck with me, man. Come on. Ma mad magical said some oxy. I wish. <clears throat> Sorry, didn't mean to. That's funny. When I whack my chest, you can hear it from the microphone. Yeah, you can. I'm sure Dave's yeah. enjoying that. <laughs> uh. Still no sound on YouTube. They're working on it. I already turned it on. It takes like 30 seconds to finish. Oh, okay. There's a buffer. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Sound should be coming for YouTube pretty soon, you guys. Let us oh, know. Oh, Ben. Thank Let you, us know. You're going to get in trouble for that statement. <sighs> we'll get to answering the question about Callie soon enough. We know you're very glad to see us. <laughs> <laughs> Callie is the best of everybody. Well, and, thank you, Janny. Yeah, appreciate that. We and appreciate that. A wig? No wig for Scott. Sorry. <sighs> tough crowd today. Yeah, and they are tough. <clears throat> Is the sound on on YouTube yet, guys? Can you hear us over there? Should be up by now. Yeah, I should have it by now. Oh, they said that the wig was just to make it seem more like Callie was oh, here. Oh, I see. Yeah, wow. Well. We do have that mullet wig. Ooh. That would be funny. Where is it? Huh? Where is it? I don't know. Grab that. <laughs> I think it was the plug. <laughs> yeah. Callie just walked in the front door in the drop cam. Okay. <clears throat> hey, Steve, I am well. How are you doing? It has been a while. Okay, it's All now, right, now they have sound on YouTube. Thank you, Ramey. <sighs> Ustream what? camera is black. Boy, we are just. Uh, we we are having technical difficulties. I'm glad I didn't start today. drinking this beer because I'd be ready for the second one. By I know. I even started. I know. <laughs> but technically, well, we're actually a little late because it's 3:27, and it we is. we're usually going by 3:22 or 3:25. Oh yeah. So we're a couple minutes late. We apologize. Vimini says now Ustream is cool. Black screen is gone. Harump says we're five minutes late. Awesome. Okay, do we have, uh, we've got YouTube both finally running? All right, Paul says they're both good. Okay. Hey, it's John P, and I will try and talk for as long as my voice holds out today. And this is Scott Ellis, coming to you live from Dallas, Texas. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's the makeshift show today. Yeah, we're just going to wing it. Uh -huh. The what? Taco Bell. All right. Okay. You think we can do a normal intro? We can try. Do you know your lines? No. <laughs> but I'll do them anyway. Uh, uh, no wig. Nobody brought me the wig, so no wig. Sorry. When don't we wing it? That's Always. a good question. That's a good question. <clears throat> oh, more or less. One fifty-eight. Yeah. Wow. wow, Carter's breaking things. Somebody tell Callie. Cameras probably all just went off again. Yeah. Oh, he's fi he's fixing things. Yeah. So are all of the cameras working now, or just some of them? In theory, they're working. Yeah. Everything's working. Okay. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> I know Callie was gonna have a haircut, but I think that's a bit short. <laughs> Uh, so remember, you have to start it with the, hey, I'm Scott. Oh, and yes. then I say, and I'm John P. There you go. You got it.
Hey, I am Scott Ellis. And I'm John P. On today's show, no more drones in D.C. Apple Pay is taking over Coke machines. Is Google Fiber headed your way? Robots invade the vineyard. And smart beds are coming soon. It all starts now. <laughs> Hey guys, Hello. welcome to a crazy edition of Geek Beat Live. Yeah, it's gonna be a little off the off the hook today. Yeah, it is. Have some fun. Uh, I'm John P. And I'm Scott Ellis. And Callie is not here. <laughs> if you can't tell, we've got lots of questions in the chat room. Where's Callie? Where's Callie? Well, you know, sometimes Callie and I take a day off take a and break. we rotate other folks in, and Scott's coming in. Sometimes it's David Foster or one of the other guys. So you know. We, Mix it are. up on you. you. You never. From now on, you just are never going to know who's going to be here today. Yeah, it's kind of the man show day today. Is it? Yeah, we, we have, have beer on the set. We do. Okay, you it's, go. it's the not Super Bowl <laughs> if we're deep beat. <laughs> I guess no, we Dave, said man. Dave Curley is joining us me? today. <laughs> hey, I've got more hair on my head than you do, and more yeah. hair on your chest <laughs> and, and than I do. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> that's too much information. <laughs> oh, brother. So. Uh, we're just going to have fun with it today. Let's wing it. But Callie is, uh, I don't know, back there somewhere. Lots of beer, lots and of ranting. That's right. We have a lot of rants today, you think? Oh, yeah. I oh, think some brother. stuff to talk about. Uh, I will admit I'm not prepared for today's show. That's okay. But you are. <laughs> if, sort of, Maybe. kind of-ish, a little bit. Well, that's kind of how it always is. Callie's always more prepared than me, so you guys are going to kind of... Yeah, yeah, this will be interesting. It'll be interesting. So, uh, I've been sick. Yeah, you've been pretty under the weather lately, so I'm glad we uh, actually have you back and you're, you can breathe. Barely, barely, yeah. yeah. So right now it's funny because I'm, I don't know, I don't know if we have a close, you can't really see, but my hands shaking. kind of shaking. I'm not doing that on purpose. It's because of the drugs I'm on. Mm. Like just to get here today, I'm taking three different steroids. Uh, because, you know, I have really horrible, horrible allergies. Steroids? Steroids. That's what happened to me. You got I actually am up. Callie Lewis. Just oh, right. way too many steroids. <laughs> <laughs> so I I, uh, I have really bad allergies, and lately everybody's like, oh yeah, the trees are really bad and stuff, and and for some reason they just crushed me earlier this week. So I was not even in yesterday for the first time in years. I didn't make it in. Well, a lot of people are suffering from allergies right now. My yeah. wife is going through that too. Do you know what you're allergic to? Oh, I'm causing it. Oh yeah, I do know. Yeah. Because I had to go take. Uh, a, uh, yeah, Earth. Uh, I had to take a test, and so they 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 laid me down and did uh, pin pricks mm -hmm. on my back. Yeah. So they tested me for seventy two local allergens, and I was allergic to fifty eight of them. So basically, I'm allergic wow. to everything. So when I get shots, because I, I for years I've had allergy shots. Most people will go and get one shot. I get three because it takes three vials to put all the allergens in for me. That sounds like fun. And the serum is like molasses. It is. It's horrible. Oh. But well, uh, that hadn't been working for me, so so I, I was suffering. So now I have to take the steroids to be able to breathe. So three like three days ago, I started that, and it takes about three days to kick in. So we're going to see if I can make it through the live show with a voice today. Okay. Well, if not, then... It might be a short show. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Are you allergic to beer? I'm not. Are you going to have a beer? I might. I'm going to have a Coke. Even though I'm already jittery, I'm going to have that Coke because I just want the taste of it. And yeah. the caffeine is going to probably make me even more hyper than I am. Well, I'm not one to let a man drink alone. Good. So. Good. So, in Here case, we go. In case it's all off you, the rails now. Yeah, in case any of you have experience <laughs> with it, prednisone is one of the things that I'm on, and that stuff that stuff gets you amped up. So we'll see how that works with a so, little caffeine. Yeah, let's pour a little caffeine down Caffeine your chaser with some prednisone. I think you're going to need the beer more than I do. Probably. So uh, Keep things under control. Speaking of uh, Coke. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to skip ahead because we're not really prepared anyways. Oh, we're going to just jump around? We're just going to move around, but that was just a... Do we have a drug story I'm, today? I'm, I'm trying to get good at segues, but Apple... Is it, is it Coke like drug Coke or like... Uh, no, 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 like Coca-Cola. Coca -Cola. Oh, Coca-Cola, okay. Yeah. Are you going to prepare Curly for whichever one you're... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we can come back to that later. Okay, all right, we'll come back to that. The other question people had was, what's going on with the tablet situation here? Yeah, you've got two of them. And, and you have zero of them. Yeah. 
You you prefer the laptop. Well, it's easier for me to see. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, I am. I, I have I, I have the normal I have my normal here, which is the old standby, the Samsung 12 inch uh, Pro, which I really very much like. Mm -hmm. But it's a big tablet though. It's a big tablet, and I and, and it's good for my old eyes, so that's good. Now I also got a hold of the Nexus, the HTC Nexus. And uh, I did a little did a little show about it, did a little review, gave it an Editor's Choice Award, and uh, have been enjoying this tablet. And then I took a lot of flack from a bunch of people, believe it or not. So why do you like it so much? It's a good looking tablet. It's it's, you know, from from outward appearances, it looks like most other tablets, okay? But it's got a nice screen. It's very high resolution. It's mm -hmm. like I forget the exact resolution. It's like I don't know. Let's call it. Yeah, 2500 by 1500 or something. It's good resolution, um, so it's nice and crisp. It's got uh, a really fast processor, but it also has a ridiculous GPU in it, like a 192 core GPU. Nice. And uh, it's got 32 gigs of memory. It's just fast and nice, and it runs Android 5.0, and it has amazing battery life. It's like eight or nine hours of battery life. And there's just, and it's like $400, four to 400 to 480, depending if you get 16 or 32 gigs of RAM, it has NFC. It has all these things in it. And then after I put out the uh, review and I, and I gave an Editor's Choice Award, a few people in the comments were like, I can't believe you did that. Other people are trash talking this thing because it's got some glitches or something. Really? Because I haven't seen yeah. any, so I don't know why. So... You know, you know, I don't care what other people no, say. I care what I that's care. That's exactly what I was going to say. Sometimes it's nice to, we, you know what, we've got our own opinion on things and recognize what they work for us and when they don't. And yeah. if that one works for you, then more power to if you. If it didn't, I wouldn't have said anything about it. We would have just let it kind of quietly fade off into existence <laughs> the way we do other things. But I think All it's a good often. tablet, so we'll use it. It would have We would have given it to Pablo <laughs> if it sucked. So I have no idea if this is going to make it on TV or not. But you know what? We should probably stop for a commercial break now just in case it just does. Just in case? So you, you think, guys, Dave? stay there. Don't go anywhere because we got to pay some bills. So we'll be right back in like one second if you were actually watching on this live. All right. <sighs> Don't worry about keeping time because the problem is if you keep time, at the end, we're not going to have really any unboxing for today's show, so we're going to have to. We should go long on the other stuff anyway. Yeah. Thank you, Digital <laughs> Phil. It felt good. It felt a little shaky from the drugs, <laughs> uh, but it felt good nonetheless. I did. Just, I just took a drink of the beer, you guys. And Bobbage, thank you for the thought. However, I do have to drive home after this, so I will not be slamming a beer. Nice. <laughs> uh, M7MD videos. Who is in the break room now? I don't know. I truly have no idea who's in the back of the house. <laughs> or the front of the house, because we're in the back. You can't <sighs> hear anything up there. Paul thought you nailed that segment, actually, to be honest. Paul, thank you, Paul. Yeah. And Digital Phil. I guess we don't, have a, we don't have a yawn counter today on uh, today's show. Because Callie who, isn't here. Who's, who she usually, usually she's yawns. the yawner? She yawns during the show. Okay. so I can fill in. Can you try and yeah. do that? So And no unboxings. I know. No yeah, Callie exactly. and no unboxings. In one show. Yeah, no Christmas we just, today. We just Walmart. didn't have anything really come in this week. Sorry, guys. Lady A wants to know where are the tequila shots. Those come right Ooh. after. We don't. Do we have tequila? Um, we have some deep Betty. We have vodka. We have vodka. Yeah. But tequila. And it's good vodka. Yeah, it is good vodka. Yeah. Uh, tequila, I don't think we have any up here. No. Pablo probably keeps some spare. Yeah, Pablo probably <laughs> has some. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. So. <sighs> yeah. Oh. Bobbage says, if Callie's not there, are you prepared to light anything on fire? I am. Mm. Yeah, we should light have thought about that. Light anything on fire. We should, we could what light What were we going to light on fire the other day? We were talking oh, about something. Yeah, we you had gonna... something. Oh, I was looking for a paper shredder. Right. And, yeah. And I said, yes, we can we, take we, care of that. We have a blowtorch. Why do we need a paper shredder? We have a blowtorch. That's so much more fun. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the uh. point. So, all right. Uh, enough of this. Let's, let's come back from commercial break. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. It's a crazy one today. 
We're not, we're not going to lie. We're, we're not predicting anything. Scott even tried to jump ahead earlier. They wouldn't let me do it. Wouldn't let him do it. Just no break in the rules. I might rule. force it later, though. Really? Just, gonna, to, just to throw something. see if Dave's paying attention. Just see if he, all right. Well, we'll start out with some news today. I hope you're prepared. I'm kind of prepared. So I'm kind of prepared because I'm a little bit upset about this one. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, tell us about it. So Google is launching uh, more cities for Google Fiber. Oh, yeah. But they're not coming to Dallas. Dallas is in the list. I'm just tired of waiting. That's it. Dallas is not I'm on done. the list. So, Are you, so you're done with Google then in general? Yeah. No more Google for me. That's it. <laughs> right. Sorry. <laughs> Not even close. But no, I mean, they're, they're, let's see, they're going to Nashville, Atlanta, Charlotte, Raleigh, Durham, all great cities. Yes. If any of you guys are in those cities, that's something to look forward to. They're exploring some other cities, including San Antonio. Yeah. So they'll be in a couple of Texas cities, but they're just not coming to Dallas. Notice they're in the smaller ones, okay? Yeah. Austin, San Antonio, which are great towns, but no talk of Dallas or Houston, but mm -hmm. I kind of understand it because... They're much, much bigger cities. I mean, if you got to lay fiber to, you know, even Dallas proper, we're not talking about the Dallas metro area. Dallas right. proper is a million people. Yeah, it's and, a big area. You know, that's like the entirety of of the whole Austin metro area. You know, right. so Austin itself is much smaller, mm -hmm. so it's easier to lay fiber in these smaller cities. So it kind of makes sense that they they start with you know, Provo, Provo, Utah. Austin. I never thought I would be jealous of Provo, Utah. I've never been there, but mm. well, there now we you go. are. I know. I want. I want. Uh, I want fiber. Yeah, apparently. Google fiber. Well, you right. can get more fiber in your diet. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of things that there are to rant about, uh, track phone was uh, recently fined forty million dollars because they had an unlimited data plan. That wasn't so unlimited? <laughs> it was not so <laughs> unlimited. Uh, so the FTC hit them with a $40 million fine because they said they had deceptive promises on their TV, radio, and print ads. Any so, thoughts about that? You know, my only thought is you've got to read the fine print, but then who actually reads the fine print? Yeah. I mean, do you? Uh, no, in fact, I just sign anything. That I'm, it's kind of the way I. It's kind of the way that I uh, yeah. do my show every time that I do the show. I'll read anything they put on the prompter in front of me. Yeah, and I'll just sign any agreement that they put in front of me. Well, that's easy. Not really, actually. You know, well, we got some paperwork to take care of after this. By <laughs> right. The way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, the interesting thing is that they're not really the only ones doing this no. because the FTC is now pursuing AT and T for the same thing. Um, so I don't know, but it's funny that they started with TrackPhone because TrackPhone is actually a subsidiary of Mexican Telecom America Movil, whatever. The guy that owns that company yeah. is like the number one or number two richest man in the world. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, is TrackPhone one of his companies? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, he's like, a, yeah. it's like, you know, Carlos he's, he's like a... What, Carlos what? Okay, it was Pablo who said your name, not me, just for the record. Yeah. So uh, don't don't come, you know, after me for it. But you know, no. <laughs> yeah. <So. clears throat> and just, and that's not all because when we talk about service providers, uh, Comcast. I mean, speaking of people just doing things that are that are <sighs> egregious everywhere. Yeah. Uh, Comcast customer service, uh, they got in trouble for something. They did get in a little bit of trouble, and it's. Insult to injury because here's a company that already has a pretty bad reputation for lousy customer service. At least that's what I'm constantly hearing yeah. about it. And, yeah. <laughs> and boy, did they just heap it on here. So one of their, uh, their folks who was working with a customer trying to get them to keep their cable service when they wanted to cancel it. Uh, the, the couple did not keep their cable service. Uh -huh. so the, the couple guy, being Ricardo and Lisa Brown of Spokane, Washington. Uh, so apparently somebody in Comcast customer service decided that this guy's first name should be A-Hole <laughs> and literally changed that. So when his bill showed up, it showed up to A-Hole Brown. Uh, A-Hole uh, Brown. Yeah, now, of course, Comcast is pulling back saying, hey, we do not support that kind of thing. We're not, you know, we're going to look into this, but... Mm -hmm. That just shouldn't even happen. Yeah, and they're saying it'll never happen again. In all fairness, you know, if you got a company that has one or two hundred thousand employees or something ridiculous, yes. you can't keep everyone in line. And we live in a world now where it only takes one really disgruntled or unhappy uh, employee to to 
send Twitter off the deep end, you True. know? Uh, so you can, it could happen if it was a small company, it could happen if it was a big company. The problem is it gets amplified so greatly when it's a big company. Yeah. The real question is, how would you ever prevent this from happening again? Like they say, oh, we're gonna take steps, but how? I mean, you could get around anything. If they put in filters so that it won't take certain names, you know, I mean. They're still gonna find ways around that. A dash H dash A, you know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, you, you could get creative with it, you yeah. know, uh, you know, misspell it, you know, I don't know, it's. We'll see. But you're right, it's hard to control it. But then, again, it's also a company with not a great reputation, so that magnifies it. You know, yeah. if, this, if this came from Zappos, who's known for great customer service, yeah. people would be like, huh? Yeah, they But would. it wouldn't get quite so magnified, so. That's true, that is true. It's kind of like the musical instrument, the guy's guitar getting messed up. Or yeah, whatever, uh, at, uh, at the not airlines. Delta, um, something breaks Oh yeah, United guitars. hates United, guitars. Yeah, United, United hates, hates guitars. Breaks yeah, guitars. breaks guitars. Oh boy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and actually, you know, I, I mean, Again, we, we hear these stories and what it does is if someone's already <laughs> angry at the company, it just gives them the ammunition oh, yeah. that they need to really go at it. I'd so run with it. You gotta make sure you're keeping people happy, I guess. All right, well, we're, we're still on our customer service stories and it just keeps going because one of the companies I happen to like and uh -huh. I am a, a, a frequent uh, stayer at Marriott Hotels uh -huh. is now getting smacked down by the FCC. What did they do? They want to block people's Wi-Fi. Right. So basically, when you go and you stay at a Marriott, they're thinking they should be able to, if you've got like a little Wi-Fi hotspot that you use to connect to the internet, they want to block that so that you have to use and pay for their service in the hotel. And the FCC said, uh-uh, no way. That is kind of ridiculous because it's basically against the law to block it any is. kind of legal broadcast of any sort, okay? Right. You, you know, the, each device has to be certified and all this stuff and there's rules. And by the way, Marriott doesn't own the, the airwaves. They don't own the freaking spectrum. We, the people, own the spectrum. We license it out for use. Like, that is correct. Verizon doesn't own the airwaves that they use. Neither does AT&T or any of the cellular companies. They get a license to use them, which comes from the country. Correct. And so every time I hear about somebody wanting to abuse that and treat it as if it's theirs, it really makes me mad. And the thought of going, I like Marriott too, I got no problem with them, and sometimes I want to use their Wi-Fi. And you know, if you're like a, if you have a special status with them, you can use it for free, even mm -hmm. if normally you have to pay, sometimes you can use them for free. And sometimes I'll use them for free. Sure. But you know what happens when you get put in the last room at the end of the hall on the fourth floor and you barely have any signal. Meanwhile, you've got a Wi-Fi hotspot with you on 4G and you're getting like 20 megabits through it. You're telling me I should have to suffer through your crappy Wi-Fi even though I'm paying for my own? It's just ridiculous. Yeah. The fact that they would even ask to be allowed to do that and then the FCC said, hells no, not gonna happen. Although. I yeah, I, I have to admit, I'll, I'm a little surprised, but I'll give them credit. They did ask. Yeah, that's like, true. You would have expected a company to just sort of do it and yeah. then see what happens. Yeah. And they didn't. They went tried to go through a process of saying, we want to do this within our properties, and the FCC said no. I'm glad so that they did. at least they didn't just go off and do it, because then that would have been a real rant. Well, yeah, and then what would have happened is uh, they would have gotten caught, mm -hmm. and then they would have gotten fined, exactly. like $40 million. <laughs> and so they did the right thing. you got to give them credit for that. But, you know, I, I'm just, I think everybody was <laughs> upset that, that they even asked for it. There was another big thing that happened with the FCC, too, which is that they, uh, they have changed the definition of broadband. Oh, yeah. So what happened in the past was they had a broadband kind of loosely defined as four meg down and one meg up, which nowadays would be pathetic. That yeah. is not, I mean, that's like 3G cellular service. It's pretty slow. So what they've done now is they've uh, they voted to change change the definition. So it's now 25 meg down and 4 meg up is the minimum before you can call it broadband. Although some people wanted it to be as high as 100 meg, but they settled on 25. Why so, would they want it to be 100 meg? Why would they want to push the threshold that high? I I think because the we kind of 
view America as not being a leader in internet speed. Fair enough. Right? Right. And so by by classifying broadband very fast, they kind of set a new bar that the ISPs can no longer be bra bragging about how fast they are unless it's really fast. So there's some competitive advantage there for the companies that can deliver that. Possibly. Like Google Fiber, who we were just talking about yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Or oh. even, even uh, Comcast or... Yeah. Uh, cable company, etc. But what would have happened then would have been all the companies that were, let's say, delivering internet over copper, like AT&T with their high-speed right. access, they're not going to be able to achieve that over over the old over the old DSL lines. No, so it can't happen. Um, so <clears throat> that would have kind of messed with them pretty bad. So I'm I'm mm. I'm imagining there was a lot of lobbying in there to keep that thing down to an actually achievable level across the board, yeah. even though some people can get a lot more than that. But I'm, I'm happy. 25 meg is, is a good amount. And if you have 25 meg down, at least... Uh, you can watch this show. You can. <laughs> and you could actually get 4K streaming if you can get all the 25 meg. Because 4K yeah. takes about 12 to 17 meg highly compressed. Okay. So that was one of the things that kind of prompted them to... I didn't know that. I thought 4K would demand a little bit more than that. Well, but the thing is, you can send 1080p with like 3 to 5. Yeah. So a uh, 1080p is one quarter of a 4K screen. Right. So it's going to take you know about three or four times that to makes sense to 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 do that. All right. So learn something new every day. Uh, Pablo is giving me the e e so let's take a quick commercial Time. break. We'll be right back after this. Don't go anywhere. Actually, you could go get like some popcorn. Uh, you could have a beer go with grab Scott. A beer. I'm Join gonna have me. my Somebody? coat. Anybody? Get something, but then come right back and pay attention to some of these commercials because we got to pay the bills. We'll be right back. Steve said, hey, John, can you give me the name of that D-Link? Eep, eep. <laughs> this is going to sound silly, but which D-Link? <laughs> I, I don't know. Out of, the D-Link. Yeah, out of context. Remind me which <laughs> D-Link we're talking about. And then, yes, I will tell you what the name of it was, if I can remember. Lady A says, I get around 6 to 8 megs over wireless. Tom is on 152 down and 10 up. Oh my God. Wow, who do you have, Tom? Who is that? Wait, 150 down and 152 10. down and 10 up. Oh, 10 up. I thought. But 150 down, I, that's a lot. Good. Yeah. He's got 75 first days. What, your place? The yeah. one I rave. The one you rave was that <clears throat> router and hotspot. Tom, I did not choose the beer. This was what was in the fridge, and it was provided to me. That's true. That I'm, is true. I'm, yeah. Yeah, I just brought it out and set it if out If you here. have some Guinness, bring it over. I will help you with that, too. Okay. There was a D-Link one. So there are a few. The little travel routers um, that, that, that you can carry around with you, there is a D-Link. And then there were there are there are a couple of other ones as well that are not D-Link brand. They're another brand. Um, uh, it's in my office right now. I think I got one of them in my office. Uh, tweet me, and I will send you the models. Um, I Where can't should remember. they tweet you, John? Tweet me at John Pose. <laughs> I will tell you the specific models <clears throat> of those things. The D-Link one is pretty good, but. Um, <laughs> there was one that I was specifically recommending, and I did a uh, when we we used it when we went to Japan, and it will let you hop on a wireless hotspot and then recreate. Oh, here you go. Hubert said the Pocket Cloud Router DIR five hundred six L. Awesome. But that one was actually a couple of years old, so that may or may not be completely available right now. I'm not sure. There's another one that, uh, there's one that we sent out to our patrons, our top patrons. We gave them all a free uh, router. And by the way, if anybody wants to support the show, Steve has the worst. you can uh, hop on Patreon and pledge a little bit. But um, there's another brand that we, that we found that also works. So text me, or I mean, uh, tweet me and I'll, and I'll give you that other one as well. Uh, IT Serenity Rob said he worked with a client that had to use a Verizon hotspot, but it got nine meg up and down. Hmm. That's not bad. Nine That's meg up bad. and down. Yeah. What's my email? My email is john at geekbeat.tv. That's the easy one. 
you can send it to john at posezedes.com, but I don't think you want to write my last name. <laughs> so it's just john at geekme.tv. And yeah. Scott is Scott at geekme.tv, and Callie at geek, we're all whatever. Everybody at geekme.tv. Except we have too many Davids, and they're all like uh, Dave. different. Dave at, David at, David P at, what? Well, we got a lot of Daves and Davids around here, so. Oh, Hawkman, <clears throat> Google Fiber in my neighborhood later this year. Awesome, where are you at? What neighborhood? Yeah, Provo, Utah. Phoenix, but... AT&T DSL to be installed was 6 meg down and 768 up. That's Ooh. why, yeah, you shouldn't be calling that a, uh, yeah. uh, uh, what do you call it, broadband. It's a glorified uh, modem. I am David says his Verizon hotspot gets 45 down and 2030 up. Yeah, I do the same, I've gotten the same, but yeah. only in certain places. It right. depends on where you're at, you can get that. Hey, John, remember when we were um, at the Bladesmith? Uh, place just outside of Hope, and we're like out in the middle of nowhere. Oh yeah. And uh, the LTE was stupid fast. That's right. I mean, it was it was. That was right. That yeah, was the was, only thing we were like, how it is was it so? Faster. It was because we were in the parking lot where the Walmart and the Verizon store were when we tested that, yeah. right? Yeah. No, we also got it out when we were out at. Um, we got it at the bladesmithing we place. Got it, we got it over at what's his face's house. Oh. Um, the one that uh, makes the really nice folding knife. Yeah. Out of his house. Um, yeah. Jerry. Yeah. Jerry's over, house. Over at Jerry's, there was a there was a tower close to Jerry's. Oh, and, and he had blazing hot, <laughs> blazing was, hot speed. It was stupid fast. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah. It was, was he like right next to an antenna? Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that you know, out there, everybody owns land, so you get those LTE antennas out yeah. there. And it's a handful of families. Yeah, and then they only share. Do they just put their steaks in front of them to cook them? Like yeah, just, exactly. <laughs> right there. By the way, by the way, Jonathan. Oh, let's come back from commercial, and then we'll yep. we'll talk about that. <clears throat> wow, I am David says his Suddenlink home internet got 107 down over copper, and they offer 150 and 300 down over that, copper that cable, right? He said over copper, so I'm guessing it's a dsl -y kind of thing. I don't know. Here we go. Okay, let's do it. Three, two. Hey, guys. Welcome back. I'm Scott Ellis. I am John P. We've been having conversations with the folks in the chat room during the commercial break. Yeah. We, and the by the way, stuff. it was pointed out that you're only drinking your beer during commercials. I'll fix that So, one, yeah. <laughs> um, But Jonathan Tott said... <sighs> Uh, he called me out. He was right. I forgot. He said, he, you know what? Actually, Marriott did just do it. But then when they got caught, then they said, oh, okay, well, we'll ask for... Oh, we'll so they did uh, we, try to get away with yeah, blocking Wi-Fi. Yeah, they because they, they blocked it. Then shame, they got shame. called out. Then they're like, oh, well, let's take... Let's, let's just find out if we can do this. And then... <laughs> Then well, they got they got slapped down, but at least I, I haven't heard of any fines or anything. So eh, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I'm not a fan of that uh, approach. But then again, I do understand sometimes it is easier to ask forgiveness than permission. That's so. right. It's like the telephone company slamming. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, now now I'm gonna get blamed for something the company I used to work for did before I worked for them, or another division did. But that's the way it goes. Yeah. Well, so, they're not around anymore, so yeah, that's okay. Don't have to worry about them too much. Uh, it is time for the gadgets section. Mm. Um, we have actually a service in here as our first uh, update of the day. We're gonna talk about Twitter. the tweeter. The the tweeters. Yeah. The tweeters. They're, so, they're, I'm, I don't know how I feel about this. All right, let's tell them. So first of all, Twitter uh, just announced two new features, if you were unaware. Yes. You, what's, what's the first one? Because I only know the second one. Well, this uh, is where my, pre my preparation starts to fall Okay, off. well, I don't know. You tell the second one, and then I'll tell the other one that you don't know. Group messaging. Okay. This is the part I'm not too sure about. Okay. So they, they have rolled out group messaging that will let you... Up to 20 people. Up to 20 people. Yeah. can group message on Twitter, get all on the same, basically, DM. Yeah, basically. And, and talk back and forth. I... Now, if you think about it, this is a pretty smart move because you've been able to DM people, mm -hmm. but you haven't been able to DM a group. And so what do people do? They turn, they, they use Twitter for certain things, and then they turn to an IM application for other right. things. Right. And when was the last time you were in any kind of a group discussion with more than 20 people on IM? I mean... More than 20 people? More than 20 people. Yeah, usually, not very often. usually you'd have fewer than 20 people. You yeah. know, even when we like all go to CES. Yeah, for CES, we generally have fewer than 20 people. Yeah. You know? So 
you can essentially use Twitter as an instant messaging platform and Twitter has the resources and you don't have to sign up for new accounts. How about your family? You might have, I don't know about you, but I've got family members who I can't get to adopt any kind of instant yeah. messaging platform, but they use Twitter. So if we can get them to at least participate in a group chat on Twitter, maybe that's good. I don't know. You know, I haven't had a chance to play with this yet, so yep. I'm going to reserve judgment. But I'm just concerned about getting added to conversations I don't want to be a part of and how much management am I going to have to do there. And, you know, I have a hard enough time just getting people to, like, not text me so much sometimes because yeah. I just can't get to all yeah, of it. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, and they're, <laughs> they're going to have to make it so that you can, just like with Skype or <coughs> excuse me, anything else, you, they're going to have to make it so that you can opt yourself out of a group conversation. Yeah, I would hope so. Um, but yeah, it could get painful real quick if all of a sudden people start adding everyone else to these groups. Yeah. Uh, maybe there has to be an uh, approval process or something. I don't know. I haven't tried it either yet. This is, uh, I wonder, th there's probably a lot of good reasons why they did this. Have you used CyberDust? I've never heard of CyberDust, but does that get you really high or something? No. I, I don't know <laughs> what CyberDust. <laughs> Only in a virtual sense. Oh, okay. um, no, it's it's sort of an it's an instant messaging and, and IM type of app, but it's it's very secure. So nothing is ever stored on your hard drive. So when I message you after a certain period of time, it just disappears. Oh. And okay. there have actually been people that have done like forensic investigations, and it, for the most part, especially on iPhone, there is no trace of it. On okay. Android. They found a few things that were remnants of just keystrokes for the keylogger, but uh -huh. nothing in the app itself. What but about I wonder, on the other can, end? My, my, How do we know they're not collecting it all in their well, data center? So it, like it, Skype does. Skype, you know, collects everything. You peer can't to even peer. get them to get rid of it's it. It's peer-to-peer. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Um, but and is it encrypted? It, 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 does yeah, it start believe, an encrypted session between them? I, I don't know all of the details, does but it's... It's a, it's a, Mark Cuban has backed uh, this thing and he's all over it. It's pretty cool. But There'll be a link down in the show notes at 158, live 158. The reason I brought it up is they have the concept in there of blasting a group of people. And mm -hmm. you can mute that group or step out of things if you don't want to be a part of that. Yep. Um, but you can share these good conversations, probably similar to what Twitter is going to do now. So. Yeah, that'd be interesting. But Twitter did something else as well. Yeah. They now let you put out 30-second videos on the Twitters. Oh, that's the part I didn't read about yet. Yeah. So, I mean, basically, what can I say? It's kind of like uh, in Instagram. I mean, Twitter now, you know, for a while now, they've, they've, they've been allowing you to kind of embed images right in the stream. Right. Which is what you can do with mm -hmm. Google Plus or Instagram or Facebook or anybody else. But they never really had the ability to embed little videos and so it's a good move now you'll be able to shoot a little video stick it right in that stream and it doesn't have to embed from a third-party source if you want a longer one you can always uh, do a YouTube and right. now if you're if you know if you're watching the stream it kind of plugs it in there as well but I mean this is gonna be part of the Twitter built-in functionality so you can go straight to Twitter with a little video I think I like that you like here's, it? here's my question what is the right length for instant messaging types of videos because you've got Vine that's like six seconds. Yeah. Instagram went to 15. Now Twitter's going to 30. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. You end up with YouTube eventually. Yeah, yeah well, eventually and then, yeah, if you go any further, you may as well just put you, you it on, on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. But also, you know, some of like Vine is different because Vine, when you hold the button, it's recording. And then when you stop holding the button, it stops. Correct. So you can do little things where you like record for three seconds of one thing and then cut three seconds of another thing, cut, and you could tell a little story really quickly, so that's a differentiated kind True. of thing. I don't think you could do that with these others. Yeah, maybe not. But but yeah, the other thing is, if you put it on YouTube, it's universal, and YouTube has its own audience, so people can watch it there and participate there and comment there, and then you can share it everywhere else, and you can still get comments and participation. But when you do it just to Twitter, mm -hmm. You don't get it on Facebook and everywhere else. It's just Twitter. So is that going to work for people? Is that good or bad? I, I don't think know. it'll be interesting to see how people use it. I'm always surprised. I never fail to be surprised at how people get kind of creative with using platforms like that. So we'll see. Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, curious. Would you use it? Would you use videos on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> I like Lady A's comment. Let's do 69 seconds <laughs> for reasons. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Yeah, sounds like a good round number to me. I, that's a good, I don't know how she came up with that uh, number, but that's a good one. I think I do. <laughs> Apple Pay expands to vending machines. You're an Apple guy. I am an Apple guy. Do I you have, have a new phone yet? I have an iPhone 6. You got the iPhone 6. I did. Did I you get the big one or the little one? I got the little one. Why'd you get the little one? <laughs> 
Um, I <laughs> There's a bunch of iPhones out in yeah. the audience and you stuff know, look, like I, that. I and... went and looked at both of them, and it, it was actually, I was kind of torn, because I really <laughs> liked um, the 6 Plus. I liked the bigger screen and all that that gave me. But ultimately, the way I use a phone and the places I use a phone and um, just at the gym and everything else, it just, I, I wanted something a little smaller than what that Plus was, so... I ended up going with the six, and I've been fair. happy with that decision. All right, fair. So, have you tried paying for anything with your phone yet? I have not. I'm Are you going to? to try that? I'm really? sure I will. Yeah, because then I'll be spending all my money. Really, <laughs> yeah. that's the only reason why. I'm not afraid of the technology. I'm not afraid of somebody stealing my stuff. I'm afraid of emptying my bank account. You know, like Best Buy. Ching, 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 yeah. Ching. <laughs> well, a company called USA Technologies is going to upgrade 200,000 pay terminals with NFC support specifically for Apple software? Pay. So that includes things like vending machines, laundry machines, parking pay terminals. I love it. Now that's really cool. That okay? is super cool. Would it be neat, let's say you're in a downtown area, you pull over, you, you park in a place with a meter, and uh, you, you want to pay, but you have no coins, but instead you just walk over and tap your phone. Yeah, and bang, you pay. Maybe you tap it, tap it on the way in, tap it on the way out. I don't know, something like that. That would work. That would be cool. I love it. I, I'm horrible about carrying cash. I rarely have change unless it's like a couple of pennies that are jammed down in the seat of my car somewhere. Right. So this is. I actually think this will be very useful for a lot of situations. Well, Western Union is also now accepting Apple Pay, so you can send money to people. So that's kind of cool too. I like it. Yeah, I like that Good stuff. All right, this next one. Mm, this is the part uh, where I start to yawn. Really? Well, really? You don't like this? I love it. Oh, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> but it makes it. me ah. tired. <laughs> We're talking mattresses, people. Smart mattresses. There's a company that is actually this is a this is a, it's not on here, but it, I believe this is an Indiegogo project. Maybe uh, maybe uh I was wondering that. Ben, too. you're going to have to remind me is this in, is this Indiegogo or is it uh Kickstarter? But I think it's an Indiegogo. And what they're doing is they are putting out a smart mattress pad. Love this idea. It's not just like a slightly smart mattress pad. It's a really smart one. Mm -hmm. Connects to your apps on your phone, and it will let you control independently the temperatures on both sides of the mattress. Yep. But it will also do things like track your body rhythms, like your sleep patterns, your heart rate, etc. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of devices that do this now that are wearables. I don't know if you're... This will device well, but does it, sleep. It does sleep, but it doesn't tell me. It tells me what percentage of the time I was kind of not in motion, but it doesn't tell me the quality of my sleep, right. or it doesn't tell me if I had a heart, you know, what my heart was doing or any of that. Yeah, there's a lot of devices with varying degrees of depth on on your on measuring your sleep, but I personally I can't stand to wear stuff like that when I'm sleeping. Yeah, because you know I turn over and I yeah. it rubs me the wrong way, whatever the case may be. I love the idea that my bed, which is contextually the right place for this technology, I lay down and it can track my sleep, but it does other cool stuff too. It can um, sink into your nest to yep. change the temperature. So, you know, I like it cold when I sleep. My wife does not, yep. um, but she can up the temperature on her side. I mean, this, this is brilliant. I love this, this is idea. really, really, this is the beginning of becoming actually smart. I hate it when yeah. they call things smart and they're not, but this is the beginning of it because you're right. If you, let's say, let's say for you an ideal temperature is to keep the room at like a 68 degrees without any modification to the surface of the bedding, but that's way too cold for your wife. Mm -hmm. Well, now it can go ahead and tell the thermostat, go ahead and be at 68, but I'm going to bring this side of the bed up an extra 10 degrees so she can be nice and cozy and you can be comfy and everybody's good. Yeah. But it does other things. There's one thing that I do like about wearing my watch to sleep, which is... When I have my watch on and I put it in sleep mode, it silences my phone automatically. Well, that's good. And it even turns off all the, like, if, if, if a text comes in, it usually will wake up the screen, even if it's in silent mode. It won't even do that. But then when my alarm goes off in the morning, it vibrates my wrist, which is cool because that's how I can wake up and it doesn't disturb anyone else. But... This Luna smart mattress pad also will help you wake up and it, it can do things like uh, integrate with in not just your Nest thermostat, but it can integrate with your lighting and maybe start bringing the lights up or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, so it can wake you up as well. So it's pretty darn cool. They had a goal of $100,000 
And within the first couple of days, they were already like $400,000. And Gio has joined us for the set today. <laughs> Hello, Gio. How are you? Everybody says hi. Oh, they're all in there. Make sure that we can hear me on the microphone. This is my once every six months <laughs> appearance on the show. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, we're glad you stopped in to, uh, to say hi to everyone there, Gio. See you. Sorry. Yeah, good to have you. <laughs> Always good to have Gio on the show for 30 seconds at a time. So, uh, oh, tell me you've studied up on this next story. I haven't. I you haven't? This is where I fell off. Cool. We're going to make this next one up. According to Ben... Oh, by the way, Ben said that was an Indiegogo project, and you can check the show notes uh, for the link so you can buy yourself a smart mattress pad. The Kraftwerk fuel cell battery. What's it do? It's a Kickstarter project from Ezelleron, uh, and the name means power station in German. It can charge your iPhone 11 times on a fuel canister, and it uses butane lighter cartridges instead oh, of a battery. This. I've heard about this concept, yeah. It's 99 bucks. That's a, that's a good deal. They say they'll ship it in February of 2016. The only, the only problem is if it's running on butane, are you uh -huh. going to be able to take it on an airplane? <laughs> no. No, you will not be able to take that on that's an airplane. That's a problem. I think also the other problem is <laughs> that electric... electric <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, it's hard to keep talking. Um, electricity is easy to get access to. Butane, not so much. You yeah. can actually go to the store and buy these cartridges. But hey, if you were going, let's say, on a camping trip or something, and you right. could buy a whole bunch of those butane now, things. Now, that's with pretty you, cool. Yeah, that's pretty. That's a very good use. Stay charged, you know? Yeah. Because even when you, the other alternative would be to take a solar charging kind of battery. We thing. have some of those, yeah. But what if you're under heavy tree cover? Yeah. Or it's cloudy or rainy? You can't. It ain't going to charge your battery. Yeah. Butane, we can light things on fire. I like it. Or we can charge our phones. Either one. So We need to get a hold of some of those. I think we do. Put uh, them for, to the test. For a variety of reasons, <laughs> exactly. we need to do that. Because okay. I still need a shredder. Speaking of other things, <laughs> you guys hang on. We're going to be right back. We're taking a quick commercial break, and uh, we're going to have some more beer and coke. <sighs> Did you study up on this next no, one? No, I mean, literally, you hit as far as I got. Okay, good. And now we're into uncharted yeah, uncharted territory. Yep, That's cool. Right. <clears throat> What's that? Uncharted? Yeah. Never played it. That should be a segment on the show. It should be like the mystery segment where they don't read anything beforehand. You never know what story you play. Oh. Hang on, guys. I'm reading a little bit here. Entertain them, Scott. Well, I'm trying to read, too, because I don't know what we're going to talk about. I don't, I'm not completely following this next one. I think I got it. Does Scott need another beer? No, Paul, I'm good. I'm taking my time. Hey, you know what? We, uh, we should have talked to Daria about this one. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. Ah, all right. It won't be the same without Callie doing it. I guess you're talking about robot time. That's what I'm guessing. Are we coming up on robot time? Do we have some uh, robot stuff in here? Jonathan said the FCC did find Marriott six hundred thousand dollars. Oh, really? Okay, I did not see that. Wow. Uh, didn't, uh, didn't the What's up, Rob? Yeah, the last time was half a million. Hubert, we talked about Callie at the beginning, so she's taking today off because we're having Scott come in, and sometimes I take the day off, and we have maybe David come in or whatever, so we mix it up a little, just like we did at CES or we will at NAB and all that other stuff. So, you know, we're just mixing it up, <laughs> mixing it up a bit. <clears throat> and Gio is now in the YouTube chat room adding value. Oh, lovely. Can we do a check-in, Paul says. Yes, we can we do that. Where is everybody? We will do a check-in here in just a little bit. Am I allowed to talk about robots? I don't know. Am I? Uh, I don't know. It is almost a little bit... Um, uh, yeah, that. 
like sacrilegious almost yeah. to not let Callie talk about robots. I could talk Maybe about I could talk about robots and bacon and really whoa. throw things off. That would really get people upset. I like robots. Well, I, I don't love them the way Callie seems to, but I do like robots. You, you don't hate Although them like I, I, I do. I am completely with you. I think they're going to take over the world and kill us all, but <laughs> you know, not going to stop it. So I think people think that I'm kidding when I say that I think robots are going to kill us all. I am not kidding. I'm I not really either, honestly believe robots will kill all of humanity eventually. And it's going to happen in our lifetime, by the way. It, it may, it may. If not, it won't be long after, you know. It's, uh, there will be a robot uprising. But, you know, I don't have kids, so... Yeah. <laughs> so it goes. Digital Phil wants me to arm wrestle you. No, I will not do that. He is stronger than me. This is proven... No, I'm not. This has been proven in the Look gym. Look at those guns. No. I mean, come on. No way, No, man. Scott is stronger than me. There's no doubt about it. Not we work course. out together... I've seen him do bench presses. He would crush me. Yeah, but arm wrestling isn't, that's different. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Because you also do the fly, and that you do a lot more than me as well. So I know you're not going to. I know. He's not going to lure <laughs> me into that one, okay? <sighs> Thanks for trying, Digital Phil. Yeah. I told you he wouldn't go for yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's come back from commercial break. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Geek Beat Live. We don't have Callie here today. We've been discussing that in the chat room, and you've probably noticed that if you're watching this on TV. I'm not sure if they're going to let this episode make it to air. Why? Because I'm on here instead of Callie? No, because I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she's taking the day off. You know, we're mixing it up. We're changing up hosts occasionally, giving everybody a variety of folks. We're glad to have Scott here today. Always fun. And I'm, a pleasure. <clears throat> I'm still barely making it. My, my voice is, I'm trying to, trying to stick it out to the end. We'll see. Do your best, man. You got to yep. carry this thing. Yeah, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I don't carry anything. But we do have uh, another interesting, potentially rant generating story to talk oh, about now. Here we go. And that rant is that Google is actually threatening or has threatened an independent musician on YouTube by the name of Zoe Keating. Uh, they threatened Zoe by uh, saying they were going to ban her if uh, she didn't make all of her music available, her entire catalog on both the free and the key pass paid subscription models. Okay, so I don't use either one of those, so you're gonna have to explain to me, but I don't think I like the tone of this very much. <laughs> I, don't think I, like, <laughs> I don't think I like the tone of your, but well, Zoe didn't think so either. Zoe called the terms harsh, and Google said, yeah, so what are you gonna do about it, <laughs> basically? <laughs> So, then, yeah. as I understand it, which my entire understanding comes from Ben and the show notes, <laughs> uh, and Two Maker says Zoe is a cello, a cello player, player Interesting. I think. Didn't okay, if I remember correctly. You know what? We don't let facts get in the way. So, Zoe is a cello player. And uh, so, there, apparently, artists must join the new paid service, and they can't have artists in the free service that are not also in the paid service. So you basically have compulsory monetization. So I understand why Google wants to do this, but do you use either of these services? Well, I we don't put we don't charge people for the for the content we put out on YouTube. But pretty guilty. yeah, but the question is, are they going to start? I mean, if they're going to make artists do this, how long before Geekbeat has to do? How this? long before Geekbeat must? Now the thing is, if you ask me, if you said to me. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make all shows, anything that's not for just pure, complete entertainment value, we're going to make everyone uh, mandatorily, potentially accept payment for their content. Now, you don't have, it, you can put it out for free, but you have to go into a program where if people want to, they can pay you for it. I wouldn't complain about that. No, it's hard to find a reason why you wouldn't want to do that anyways, is, is it, but... Is it, I noticed in the notes it said mandatory minimum 320K audio. Resolution. So, or, yes. Or, yeah, or whatever, yeah. All right, so is, the, is, it, is it that the high quality stuff you have to pay for, and then it's going to be this nasty, blocky 3G... I don't believe question. so. I, I, I think that you're able to either give it away for free, or people can charge... 
but you have to you have to upload stuff at at least 320k resolution, and then yeah. is it audio resolution? Yeah. Okay, audio resolution. Which is pretty high quality. But I thought that was video resolution. Here's the other sticky part, though. I'm not. I'm a little less sure of, and that is, it looks like they're uh, expecting a five-year contract. Now At least that, they were giving Zoe that line. Yeah, that's just, uh, that's I don't much. even know. What if I, I don't, don't want to do anything for five years? Go find another place to distribute your content. We're YouTube. Oh, do you know the story? Okay, so okay Gio. <laughs> oh, somebody who's prepared. Can I use your microphone? Tell us the story. <laughs> is it uncomfortable you, when I touch yes, it? Yes, it's uncomfortable. It? Okay. Wow, this is really awkward. So, I'm just going to stay uh, over here. I'll have about 80% of the story correct. Okay. Five years is an issue for her. Uh -huh. um, also, the biggest issue for her is that they require her to release anything anywhere online must be released on YouTube at the same time. Oh. So she can't sign any she exclusive can't, deals. She can't put it on iTunes? She can't put it anywhere unless she puts it on uh, YouTube. So essentially, they have taken complete control away from her to release her music where and when she wants to and tied her in for five years. Even my arm around you makes you bristle, doesn't it? It does. It makes the does hairs it, on the back of my it? neck just he's stand starting, up. He's starting Isn't to sweat a little bit. Yeah. You <laughs> you're a sexy <laughs> man. That's what happens yeah. when you're near me. So, <laughs> you know, beard. I know. Yeah. It's like I don't have a job. I don't have a job. <laughs> so, so that's the story y'all are butchering. Now. Okay, thank you. Thank you for clearing that up for us. And, and they will, and, and I predict they will back off. You think YouTube will back off? They, because they're they're already catching major flack from flack for it. <laughs> and I'll tell you, if Taylor Swift jumped off Spotify because they tried to pull that stuff when big artists yeah. jump off YouTube, yeah. they will backtrack. I don't know. I don't know. But I, 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 I do. But, but Geo does know. <laughs> Geo. And we don't let facts get in the way. I will tell you this. Uh, my little rant about Google Glass didn't seem to make any difference to Google. They were like, oh, really? Do you feel that way? Well, they're not well, selling it anymore. Nice. I thought that was because of your rant. <laughs> no. They, didn't they stop selling Maybe. Google Glass? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't just know. Smash Google Glass. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if my rant on Google Glass is what brought it to its knees? Yeah, you think Sergey was going, yeah, you know what? He's right. He's right. Yeah, we should He's, just stop this whole thing. Let's just kill this whole thing. I don't think that happened. But yes, I will take credit for it. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here for first. That's right. Yeah. All right. Net, uh, there's also, in the science category, new flexible implants for brain surgery. Okay. Do we have a video on this one? Yeah, but I'm not going to play audio. I know, but you can show some video. Oh, yeah. oh here we go. Look at it. Oh, currently, at MIT. Right. The, currently, what you can do with brain implants is you can wire in some inflexible wiring, but you can only measure one thing at a time. However, over at MIT, Cali's favorite, mm -hmm. just because it's not Harvard, they have a new flexible polymer fiber implant. And customized fibers can deliver drugs and light therapy and measure the effects of the brain and all kinds of stuff. And uh, someday it could even do things like uh, better treatment for Parkinson's disease and this, yeah, other this could be big brain for, related disease things. Could definitely be big for neurodegenerative types of diseases um, and open up some options. Of course, it could also be a pathway to turning us all into robots. That is true. I think uh, the, 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 Probably the reason she likes MIT so much is because all the robot stuff comes out of there. We know Callie's a robot. And what she's thinking is if we can get brain implants into people, then the robots can control the people instead of the other way around. That's my theory. I'm just saying. Go with it. And having said that, we're taking a quick break. But and then we're coming back and it's going to be robot time without Callie. Sorry. <laughs> oh, brother. A check-in? A check-in, yes, let's do a check-in. We'll do it, uh, should we do it now or should we do it when we come back? Uh, we're we're uh, running over on our time, so let's do it. Even over. given the fact that we're not going to have unboxings? Okay. Well, we'll do the check-in while we're... We'll do it now. Yeah, we're at 41 now. Oh, okay. That long already, huh? We got four... We only have about, yeah, four more stories, so one more segment. So we'll do a check-in. We'll do our check-in now. Digital Phil, by the way, wants to know how we met. So we'll have how to How you answer, and I met? Yeah, how you and I met. So we'll have to answer that because they're going to... We're checking in now. 
Do you know how to do this? Oh yeah. Well, you this is where people like are from. We gotta go fast. That's right. Lang Lancashire, UK. By Liverpool, the way, New net York. guy was here first. San Marcos, Texas. Tallahassee, Kent, Florida. Florida. Kent, Ohio. Yeah, I know where Kent is. Grew up in Indiana. Tarnowski, Gory, Poland. Tallahassee, Florida. North Devon, North Devon, UK. Paducah, Kentucky. Kokomo, Indiana. Worcester, Ohio. Athens, Athens Greece. Greece. Yasu. Irving, Texas. Right around the corner. Boynton Beach, Florida. Quincy, Illinois. Dubuque. Charlotte. Wolverhampton. Wolverhampton. <laughs> Northumbria, England. Kennesaw, Georgia. Then uh, Denmark. Engisvang, <laughs> Denmark. Kent, Kansas City, Charlotte. I don't know where that is. Hot are. wiring Scott's car. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Fallbrook, California. Romania, Bucharest. Then Romania, love it. Argentina, Alberc Albuquerque, New Mexico. Ramen, Norway. New York State. Hopedale, Mass. Uh, Katwijk, Netherlands. We always butcher that one. Yeah. Blue Springs, Missouri. Canton, Ohio. Got it. <laughs> Winchestertonville, Idaho, Iowa. <laughs> oh, Jacksonville, nice. Alabama. Exeter, UK. Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. Cal Cagliaria, Italy. Italia. Cag Cagliari, Italy. Sorry, I butchered that one. What part of Italy is that in? Gerald, Texas. It's in. Cagliari. What, what, what part of Italy? Like north, south? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Gerald, Texas. Rye Brook, New York. In Matra, Finland. Jani is in Robotlandia, Finland. Uh, northeast, southwest, Bob, Bobbage. Cincinnati, Ohio. St. George, Utah. Langdale, Nevada. Logandale. Wahalia, Australia. Hey, Paul City, is that where you're from, Scott? <laughs> Andre oh, is also in later, Romania. <laughs> Video testing is in Port Elizabeth, South Africa. Nice. Cue ball city, that's nice. China, Texas. I need to go there. Nice. Okay, guys, thanks for checking in. And uh, I guess we will come back from commercial break. What? It's already 4.30. I know, we're rocking. Wow. Or not. We're dragging, dragging this thing out. <laughs> How is it that you and I are taking longer than you, Callie and I? Because usually Callie and I take a long time. All right, guys, welcome back. We are live, it and just, it is robot time. It feels kind of wrong doing this without Callie. Yeah, I know. But we'll do our best. You know what? We're Maybe today wait. I'll even... How about if I kind of try and play Callie's role a little bit? You, you, but I want to I want to talk about the, the second one, because that's right up Okay, alley. that is up your alley. Okay, the first one <laughs> is the robot base personal robot. That's right. You'll be able to get your own robot based on Android... And it's only a thousand dollars, and uh, it comes from a company called Robot Base. It's going to be a robot like butler that has eight full facial recognition. Later. Oh, do we have audio with this one, Dave? Oh, hello, Jay, a little bit. Let's hear it. I put the coffee on. She can interface with household devices, and she's also a personal stylist. What do you think? Why don't you try the blue tie with it? <laughs> Good no idea. Way. She's your world-class office assistant using artificial intelligence algorithms to analyze data quickly and efficiently. We plan to run a marketing campaign on the Upper East Side of New York. What do you think about that neighborhood? This neighborhood has a very promising outlook for this campaign with 25,000 housing units. Also, 82% oh, of people living there have a college degree. I think that's the right one for us. It's hard for me to play Callie's uh, particular <laughs> segment on this one because I want to tell you what I want to say is I'm not sure that I want robots telling me what they think of my plans. But or your time. wouldn't it be awesome <laughs> if a robot had built-in facial recognition, object recognition, emotional recognition with a 3D camera and deep learning algorithms? And it can learn through natural language integration. And it has a microphone capable of far field recognition so it can listen to your whispering about it from across the room. Wouldn't that be awesome, Scott? <laughs> I think this is the robot of your nightmares. I think it's great. <laughs> I think everyone wow. needs one. You know, it looks really cool. And, and certainly at the price point that they're talking about, it seems pretty amazing for about $1,000 or something. But, man, I don't know. That kind of creeps me out a little bit. And I you like robots. shouldn't be creeped out. Yeah, you shouldn't be <laughs> creeped out because just think of it this way. 
your personal robot for $1,000 is also going to integrate with Z-Wave, Zigbee, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth so that it can control everything else around you. There's nothing to fear. Oh, man, I'm going offline for that. I'm sorry. No more. <laughs> Okay. Now, now it's coming a little bit too close to reality for me. I don't me. know. I don't know. That sounds like a, that sounds like quite a bargain. They're going to be putting one of these in every. Look, there's one watching over the sleeping children. <laughs> oh, I feel better already. Oh, and the child is making friends with it. Look, look, mommy. I don't need you anymore. I have a robot. Next thing you know, you're going to try to turn it off, and then it's going to roll up a magazine and try to stuff it down your mouth. Yeah. And go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you need to leave the house today, John. <laughs> wow. I'm going to name mine Chucky. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> I will now, get one of those robots just so that I can say I told you so when it kills me. <laughs> I, yeah, it'll be great. Don't say that because you'll be dead. It will be, but, it, uh, but I will leave specific instructions. Uh, that will be what's carved on my headstone. I told, I told you, you so. <laughs> she did it. I'm that's telling right. you, she yeah, did it. That's right. I told <laughs> you. It probably will. It'll put something on my grave. All right, well, All right, tell us about the other robot today. Well, the other robot is a little bit more tame and I think a little bit more useful, something I can get excited about. And this is a, they call it the Vine Robot, and it's a project led by the University de la Rioja, Does it which take is a Vine region in Spain. I don't think it's that kind of vine. Oh, okay. So it's actually meant to go out and monitor wine crops. Oh. So it can look for things like... Uh, the condition of the crops, it can check soil moisture, upload data, and it's obviously meant to be a little bit more efficient than a person going out and doing this all the time. And this is kind of a big deal because, you know, if uh, wine, uh, vines do get disease and things like that from time to time, can wipe out a crop. It's been a big, big problem in some of the uh, bigger wine producing regions in the past. So if they can monitor that more closely and, and keep that from happening, then people like myself who love a good glass of wine, can continue to do so. That's right. The disruption to... in our drinking. That's right. We don't want anything <laughs> disrupting the I I imbibement. No, not at all. That's right. Okay. Well, uh, those That's are good, good robot stories today. So now we get to move on to planes, trains, and automobiles where we won't have many automobiles today, but we will have some other stuff. Including? Not the least of which is the fact that somebody crashed a DJI yeah. Phantom into the White House lawn. Oops. Sorry about that. <laughs> Yeah, way to go, Carter. You just ruined it for the rest of us. So here's the deal. If you own a DJI Phantom and you want to go flying it around Washington, D.C., don't do any firmware updates anytime soon. Nope. Although I don't know how you're going to not because DJI is taking some uh, steps to force a mandatory firmware update on everyone, which will set a 15-mile radius no-fly zone around downtown Washington. So you won't be able to theoretically fly your DJI Phantom there. Yeah. Although, although I'm thinking that relies on the fact that the Phantom has its GPS chip active, you know, and what happens if you were to somehow deactivate that or not have it in GPS fly, flight mode, to have it in fully manual mode, would it still not do it? I don't know. I guarantee you there's some hacker out there trying to figure it out right now though. Well, the funny thing is, too, DJI only makes one, I mean, they were talking about one particular quadcopter, okay? Yeah. There's a billion others well. out there, and they're not going to all do it, so this isn't going to solve the problem. The drone, by the way, was flying in a federally restricted airspace where it shouldn't have been anyway. Right. Okay, so how are they going to make this happen? I don't know. I think the real answer, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I think the real answer for this would be for the White House itself to install some sort of protection against this that essentially uh, blocks the ability to use remote controlled aircraft around the White House. Oh, I thought we were going to see surface to air missiles shooting yeah, drones. Yeah, or out. little miniature <laughs> surface to air missiles. Pew! And it just takes it down. Uh oh, Geo. Uh, wait. Geo Round has three. something to add. I bring so much value today. He's a drone guy. The DJI released a statement. I don't know if y'all said this or not. The day after, uh -huh. they are now issuing a mandatory... Yeah, we just talked about that. Thank you. Thank you for your input. We appreciate well, that. Well, third time's the charm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. We have one more story today, and that story is about the Knox SV Speedboat. Oh, I want this bad. Designed this... by German boat builder <laughs> Rivers and Tides. It's a good name for a boat builder. 
It's a 22 foot long boat uh -huh. with how much horsepower? 225 horsepower? Electric motor. It's an E-drive, electric drive, yes. And it will go 27 knots, top how, speed. What is that in miles an hour? I don't do the translation well. It's like, I think it's about like 34 or something. It's, uh, there's a little, a little more miles per hour than knots, but not like tremendous. But, there's, but they also have the Knox SV. Yeah, this is the one. Which has a 460 cor uh, horsepower Corvette V8 and a 75 knot top speed. It's pretty quick. What's most impressive is it's $300,000. Do we have any kind of video on this, Dave? Almost. Oh, oh, he's working, working on, on it. the video. It has a $300,000 uh, price tag, which actually for, for that kind of a boat, for that kind of boat and speed, yeah, it's pretty cheap. It's it's almost affordable. <laughs> And that's fast on the water. If you've ever gone anywhere close to that on the water, that's that's moving. I think the fastest I've ever been on the water was about 60. Yeah, me too. And I was freaking out because it's like bam, bam, bam. And I mean, it is choppy and scary. Yeah, I don't know if you're like me, but you always imagine the front of the boat just going yeah. into the wave. And... Tanking under or what, what I worry about more than going under because that'll slow you down and toss you into the water. But I worry about it going over and yeah. landing on me. You know, that would be... That would be bad. Not my preferred method of water travel, shall we say. Did we not have video on this? Hang on, we had a glitch. We had a <laughs> glitch in the video system, folks. Ah, uh, yes. So, no video on that one today. That's okay. Oh, by the way, we have other people that we missed, uh, and Cagliari is in Sardinia, South, South Italy. Italy. Yep, very nice. And we also have someone watching from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Hey. Junaid, is that how you say your name? <clears throat> nice, Saeed. Dyer, so, Tennessee. Hey, John, did you see the new Terminator tra trailer? <clears throat> Seems right up your alley. I did. Where did I see that? Google Plus. Oh, 60 knots is 69 miles per hour. So okay. 75 knot top speed would be probably like 86. oh, 86 miles an hour. Thank you, Carter, for the human calculator. Gigawatts? Uh, no, <laughs> oh, it's a. 1.15 miles per hour. Okay, cool. Oh, and Crafty Papa's in Dyer, Tennessee. Yeah. So, oh, Digital Phil's still asking how we met. Do you remember how we met? Match.com? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> we were a no. match. Yeah. Uh, the Tinder wasn't even a thing at that time. We met at um, WordCamp 2008. Really? Is that the one that I did? The one that was in Frisco, the one that you did. Yeah. The one that I did. Yeah. That's where we first met. Yep. Wow. You were just um, launching Woopra. Oh, and that everybody was the day there we got little Woopra. Woopra. Yeah. That's right. Got our codes and we were all super excited. And it was pretty cool, too. It was at awesome. The, at the yeah. time, we were like, holy. Like, oh, this is worth showing up just for this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, WordCamp. That was fun. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. I, I thought that believe. was where, but I didn't remember uh, uh, 100% there. 2008. How long? That was it seven? No. Seven years ago? 2008. It was February, And it's May, now March, 2015. March. It was about seven years ago? Doesn't seem like it. Do you have the seven-year itch? <laughs> Time to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, he, he tried Google Analytics, John. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jacob said, did I miss you guys talking about the Tinder Romeo guy? I don't know about Which that. Which Tinder Romeo guy are we talking about? Tinder Yeah. Uh, uh, Lee's voice around Newport Beach, California. Come on over. We'll take you for a real boat ride. Yes, seven years ago, I was only 10 years old. I'm hoping to be Time able flies. to join something and vote next year. You were a good presenter for 10 for years not, old. Not bad for a 10-year-old? Yeah. Nice. Uh, well, guys, we don't have any unboxings for today's show, so uh, now that I think about it, we should have probably wrapped it up. Yeah, we're done, aren't we? I guess we are well, that done. That was really anticlimactic. I'm it sorry. was. Sorry, so, you guys. Uh, especially for those of you who are getting the TV variant of this thing. <laughs> if uh, it makes it to TV. Yeah, if it makes it to TV. <laughs> I'm John P. I'm Scott Ellis. And you can follow him on Twitter at VS Ellis. And you can follow him at John Pose. You can do that. You could. Uh, we will see you next week. So stick around for whatever comes after us. Thanks for hanging out, guys. And yeah, see you next time. Too. We'll see you later. Bye. Geek Street, brought to you live from the Geek Beat Theater. Geek Beat Theater.
the Geek Beat Theater garbage <clears throat> disposal, disposal units. Yeah, under the sink. And for those of you that are still around, uh, by the way, Digital Phil gives you a uh, thumbs up. Wow, Scott thank is way you. cooler than Callie. Wow, Digital Phil, that's a huge compliment. I don't. But I don't worry. Whenever Callie's here, he tells her that she's cooler than you. So <laughs> it's yeah, all good. I know, see how Phil rolls. Jaybird, I, I didn't even. Say, you said bye, John and Scott. I didn't even see you say anything earlier. Did you say anything earlier? I guess we'll see. Uh, you by later. the way, Daniel John is in Selden, New York, on Long Island. Very nice. Nice. But they have boats there. And they do probably have them there. You know what was cool about that boat that we didn't talk about? What it was cool. Well, I mean, you mentioned that it's the electric, electric drive. But gas is, exp you know, it's come down a lot in price yeah. lately. But on the lake, it's always ridiculously they expensive. Do. Yeah, like, they, they just gouge you on price. On they the do. Lake, so. Anything that you can do to do, like, hybrids and, and increase fuel uh, efficiency on the water is going to be very, Huge. very good. Yeah. I wonder how far that battery will get you, though. Uh, that's a good question. I do not know the answer. A lot of resistance in that water. Rick wants to know, how's the Geek House working out for you after a few months? We've been here for about six months, almost. Yeah, we have. It's pretty awesome. I think it's working out for everybody pretty well. Yeah, it's a great space. Yeah, it's a good place to work it's, out of. It's an amazing place to be able to come to work every day, to be honest. <laughs> Having spent my days in uh, little gray cubes in the past, I can tell you this is pretty awesome. <laughs> I'll never go back to gray cubicle world. We're having fun with it. Yep. Well, guys, it's 4.41. I'm surprised my voice held out. It's about going, uh, going down. John wants to know, did Livy get eye surgery? No, Livy had her eyeball put back into her by Carter, but then she got an eye patch from Pablo. So she is not fully recovered yet, uh, but she's working on it. So Thank you, Ramey. It was fun uh, to be here today. However... When we get three people on the show all it's at too, once, it's, it's, it takes too long. Yeah. We can't get through a single segment in like 30 minutes. Yeah, I know, because there's too many opinions. Yeah. So two is about uh, just about right. But maybe you and Callie can do it next time. Sure. Or Callie and Dave. Or you and Dave. Or we'll mix it up a little bit. Yeah, somebody else engineer. I want on. That's right. Dave, Curly can do it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work the TriCaster, and we're going to put Curly out here. How's that? Oh, that would be nice. Steve wants an apology from Dave for what he did to Livy, but I don't think that's coming anytime soon. No, no not coming anytime soon. <laughs> oh, brother. Dave and Dave. Uh, Callie and Holly, yeah, we could do that. You know, uh, Holly pose. I wonder what Holly would do if she was anchoring the show. She'd be funny. She would be funny. She would be funny. She is very funny. We need funny. to try that sometime. You know, she hasn't, she hasn't been tweeting much lately because she's been so busy at work, but you got to admit... <laughs> Her tweets are somewhat like, for somebody who's so quiet and reserved, some of her tweets are the funniest ever. What is her Twitter? At Holly, Holly Pose. Pose yeah. Holly Pose? Yeah, but. You, you guys know. should definitely go follow her. Yeah, but it's, she hasn't. We got to talk her into doing more Twitter, Twitters because uh, it's, it's very amusing when she does it, but yeah. she hasn't done it, done it much lately. So just been working. If anybody wants to help Holly get a new job, you can do that too. So, you know, she's an HR person. Yes, that's true. If we have Ken, Pablo, and Carter, <laughs> just do imagine a show. That right now. Yeah, round table. <laughs> yeah, over the round table yeah. between yeah, Ken, you, you, Carter, and Pablo, there you, wouldn't be much. You could do three people on that show. You just have to have yeah. a second window and just roll the show notes. Yeah, yeah, you just have to, yeah, just roll the notes. You could have a drinking game, like every time the air conditioner turns on, because you'll hear it clearly. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, All right, right, guys. Anything else? I don't think so. No, I gotta go to the bathroom, man. I just. Finish well, my beer. That's true. Okay. Go do it. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. We will see you next week. We're out of here. I'm gonna Ciao. go. I'm gonna go get some sleep. Thanks, guys. See you guys. <laughs>